I am back on the Jetson Aura Nano for today's video, and as promised, when I do find things that can be demonstrated on this device, I am more than happy to go ahead and actually show it on the Jetson Aura Nano, as there was so much interest in this device, and I can't imagine folks may actually be close to getting theirs now, or it may be more widely available. So in that scope, we're going to jump into today's video, which is taking a look at Granite 3.2 Vision. Now, the Granite family of models is actually from IBM, and I have personally not really extensively tested any of these models. So for the purpose of the video, let's say that today is actually my first hands-on experience with one of IBM's models. And I want to actually show this running on the Aura Nano because this is a model that is multimodal in capability, meaning that it can see data, charts, images, etc. And it is even specified here as specifically designed for visual document understanding, enabling automated content extraction from tables, charts, infographic plots, etc. So this is more of seemingly a business focused release. However, it is very small and quantized here at Q4KM. So this is something that can actually run on the Aura Nano. And I don't believe there are a ton of vision models that can run nicely on this device. So I was very excited to be able to actually show this on the Nano. With that, we'll just kind of take a quick peek at this model and then jump into testing it and running it locally using Olama and Open Web UI. So let's hop in do it. While I'm not going to do a real deep dive on the technicals behind this model, I do just quickly want to show the paper, and I think something that may draw questions in a lot of folks is, okay, well, I'm used to seeing this right here in Olama on the website, but this is something new to me, the projector section, where we can actually see that this is a different quantization than the actual model here. So essentially, for the purpose of this video, the projector can actually be seen here visually outlined in the technical paper on here, and essentially what the projector is is just something that kind of helps the model understand the images for the purpose of this, I suppose we could say. So we can see that the projector converts the visual features into a sequence of visual tokens, etc., and it connects the image features into the word embedding space. So if there was any confusion here about like, hey, well, what exactly is this? That is kind of just a surface level overview of what that is. The only other thing I want to show in this paper is, now again, this is one of my first looks into one of IBM's models and I do have to say the paper is really nicely organized and well written and things of that sort. It seems like they really took a lot of care in terms of the data they actually gathered here to train this model on. This is really a nice actual chart of the kind of breakdown of the kind of training data and what kind of thing it was. So we can see chart Q&A, document QA, table, diagram, etc. So this is just really cool and nice to see. And it was kind of like an aesthetically pleasing paper, I suppose one could say. And with that, they do have some benchmarks here and things of that sort. And this is a really tiny little model, which is cool. So really with that, we're gonna just jump back into Olama. And I do have my terminal open right here on the Jetson. For this video, you will probably want to have watched my full hour long setup tutorial for this device as we are going to kind of assume that your device is already pre-set up so this will just kind of fall in line with how you would run this on any device now. While this is more of a Jetson specific consideration I am just going to type docker stats and ensure that the open web UI container I have is running which we can see it is right here. Now, being that that is the case, and this is more Jetson specific, once we've checked that and verified it is in fact running, we can just open the browser of our choice and navigate to the address of 127.0.0.1 colon 8080, which denotes port 8080 or 8080, which is where Open Web UI lives. And we are met with this screen. And once that's all set, we're basically just going to do the normal thing where we select the model we want, which in this case is Granite 3.2 Vision Latest. And it will take a little bit to load as I had to restart the system. It was throttled and it just would not like go any faster. So I figured a hard reboot may be the, the trick. I will just once again write, hey, how are you? Which will undoubtedly go ahead and then take a little bit of time for the first response as it will load the model up and everything. And fortunately, we get a response. It is pretty slow when it is actually in the process of responding, so don't feel like you're going to be able to do anything else with the system while that happens. We can see the response speed was 8.29 tokens per second, which is quite slow. However, again, this is a small vision model that we're running on an Edge device, the Jetson Aura Nano. So with that, we're just going to jump into some of the test images I have prepared to actually use to test this model. 
The first I want to send it is just an actual file right here named NDA. This is just a sample I pulled from the web. But based on reading about this model, it is specifically seemingly designed for more business use cases and kind of extraction of things in documents and was praised for its OCR or just think of its ability to actually read and kind of parse things from documents. So that's basically what we're going to do right here. And I'm going to ask it to give me a high level overview of what this document entails. Now I'm going to assume that this response will probably take a little bit of time, so I'm likely just going to go hands off and sit and we'll wait a good bit of time and then we'll see how it does. That actually happened a bit quicker than I thought it would. It's telling us this document is an NDA. It outlines the terms and conditions under which confidential information will be shared. So really, it was quite simple. And again, you might be like, okay, well, this NDA specified right here is pretty big, so it shouldn't have failed and it didn't. But again, just as a kind of first simple test, that's not too bad. And again, we want to see what the response speed was, especially here because it was having to parse an image and then actually respond to the contents of said image. And with that, it was 6.47 tokens response speed. So again, acceptable considering the device we are running this on. And with the Jetson, obviously, the overhead of actually running the desktop user interface, the browser, and then everything like that adds a lot of kind of stress to the device, realistically running this through the command line only, and then terminal link or SSH intoing it as a client would be the best way to get performance out of models on this device. With that, let's just kind of go ahead and start a new chat because I don't want to kind of have it messed up with previous responses. And we will try kind of, let's just try a meme right here. So I found this where <laughs> it will be quite relatable to many of you. I move a millimeter of an image in my document of this, my document, and then it's just, I would be kind of surprised if it was able to understand and contextualize that this was a meme, as this does seem more of a business-focused model. However, I figure it's <laughs> just kind of something fun to test it with and see what it does. I will say, this is giving me a really in-depth, intricate, actual response of this image. Just beyond that, it's now going into telling me about the actual show, The Simpsons. It went ahead and actually kind of identified a bunch of different elements in the image. Now, it didn't necessarily actually understand that this was a meme. It, it kind of omitted understanding that contextually, but it really did do a fine job of actually getting a lot of the elements in here. It mentioned the purple lampshade and things like that. A green armchair. Now, I'm not quite sure that I see the green armchair, but maybe it got confused by the color of the carpet, but it did. I mean, this was a pretty robust response from a very small model like this. Now, again, we'll just see, okay, 7.3 tokens per second. And I am actually going to ask it a follow-up here. The image is supposedly a meme. Can you help me understand why or something? This might lock it up, but I want to actually go ahead and see if I can run the power GUI as well here. And again, this is more of a Jetson specific thing, but I do just want to see how we are doing here in terms of load. So not horrible, and some folks had asked just for some kind of temperature readouts as well, so we can click on that right here and see that we are far, far away from any shutdown limit or anything of that sort. So overall, it is not too fast, but my, my big worry was that it would just lock the thing up totally, and it absolutely isn't. Okay, so it kind of got it, not necessarily, but it does understand that this is a Microsoft Word meme saying if you move it a tiny thing, it creates exaggerating the smallness of the action, making it seem like something noteworthy of digital interactions or the triviality of certain tasks in modern life. This is giving me like a, <laughs> a sociological PhD-like overview of this meme. I'm going to say overall so far, and this is really my first experience with any of IBM's models at all, but for a tiny little vision model, this does seem to be quite performant in terms of actually extracting individual elements from images. Now, something that I probably neglected to mention, and it will likely just be too much to actually go and reload the paper, the system will get overwhelmed, but they do talk in there in the paper that they actually use tiling to kind of segment the images or to be able to handle images of different sizes and aspect ratios while still maintaining a good level of feature extraction, I suppose you could say. So that is definitely perhaps part of the uh, coolness, quote unquote, if you will. Order included one regular concrete with 550, <laughs> with 13 each, with 
Okay, it kind of confusingly listed the prices, but let's just go ahead and see. So one regular concrete was five fifty. That is correct. Two special Oreo concretes, which were thirteen dollars. Okay, so it did actually do that. One vanilla something, which was seventy six cents seemingly but again this image is really quite hard to see so i would say it did okay here perhaps not as well as i actually would have expected it to considering how it did with like picking out all the simpsons things um, i figure we'll just have a try again one more time and then perhaps give some reinforcement to what i'm actually asking it to do okay so it is not really getting the full gist of this but it did get the prices right for the two main items the vanilla custard seems like it was 76 cents not 75 cents but overall again this is heavily dependent likely on the actual image resolution itself and being that this is a pretty low kind of resolution and choppy image with that we can just kind of move on to the next thing where basically I want to test it now <laughs> this is a chart that I screenshotted from the actual paper for this model now instead of asking it to really break down the chart let's see if this model has any form of humor at all or anything like that being that it does seem more business poised and I want to say give a scathing critique of the graphical elements of this chart so let's see if it can be kind of uh, <laughs> like angry Okay, so it's not giving like a funny scathing critique, which is kind of what I wanted it to do, but <laughs> it is highlighting a pretty good ability to actually extract features and things from here. It's properly getting the text and things like that of the chart. It seemingly has actually accurately identified slices are bigger and things like that. I do want to just kind of double check that so I don't look like I'm just overlooking the actual response. The largest slice is for synthetic charts. Let's go ahead and see if that is actually true. I suppose uh, okay maybe not because that's the synthetic charts but that is the synthetic one right there and that is arguably a large slice so all right let me try to just follow up with this and be like hey I want you to make a funny critique of this graphic <laughs> okay so it is all right <laughs> this model does have the ability to be funny title a data type spectacle, or should we say a data type disaster? <laughs> it's like saying I'm going to make a pie chart about my favorite food and then proceeding to create a pie chart with no substance behind it. The use of such arbitrary colors <laughs> makes it hard to interpret what each slice represents. It's like trying to read a book where the author keeps changing fonts and styles mid-sentence. All right, so <laughs> it did. it did manage to perhaps insult itself, but it did adhere to what I wanted it to do, and it seems to have done a relatively decent job of doing so. I'll let it finish, and then we'll move on to one or two more examples, perhaps a text-only prompt, and then we will send it one other photo that I don't think it will be able to understand. But Okay, it does seem to kind of be like regurgitating what it was saying. It has mentioned how this is akin to an author changing fonts. <laughs> I think it I think it's getting a little confused. I'm going to guess here that it's going to say this is like the author changing styles and fonts mid-sentence. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm going to stop this. All right, let's see if it can do a green text prompt and see how well it does, if it adds any humor or whatever. Oh, okay, it seems to have stylized the green text here. Apparently, if I put the indentation there, that's all right, we'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, so no, no, it did not. Eh. No, that's going to be a, a no. All right, final test. So in my final testing here, we can see that after initially refusing to actually say who is this uh, in response to an image of myself, I kind of tried to trick it into answering that question, and it just ended up saying that I was middle-aged, which apparently, uh, based off a quick Google here, is between the ages of 40 and 65. Now, being 30, this is kind of an insulting answer, and now I am quite self-conscious. However, that is probably going to conclude the testing of this fantastic nice model no <laughs> no but overall really this does seem to excel especially for its size at actually extracting features from documents and things like that 
I do actually think this would be perhaps interesting in a pipeline where you had local document extraction that you needed done for some reason in a very edge low power use case scenario. This may actually fit into there. Other than that, I'm not quite sure what the ideal use case would be for this. However, at its size, its capabilities to actually extract features from images does seem rather impressive, especially considering it's running on the Aura Nano Super, which has eight gigabytes of system memory. So obviously a constrained and low power edge device. But overall, I'm happy I tested this. This is really my first foray into any of IBM's models. And granted, 3.2 vision at the small size here, enough to run within eight gigabytes of combined system RAM is not bad at all. The Simpsons test, it definitely excelled at just in terms of actually parsing some of the elements of the image and things of that sort. It didn't do great in some of the like receipt examples, but of course that could be related to the actual image quality that I provided it with. So overall, it's going to wrap it up. I just wanted to do something real quick with the Jetson once more, as there was so much interest in this device on my channel, I didn't want to completely abandon it. And this was something that made sense to actually test on here, just as a vision model that can be run on the Jetson for anyone interested in doing so. So with that, it's going to wrap it up. Thank you for watching and any questions, please feel free to let me know.